Well, hello again. I've got some super important stuff to do today, so I thought I'd procrastinate with little mailbag. Let's get started. This first one here is labeled 50 pieces European tea slot. And so I think this one is actually labeled correctly because what's inside here sure feels like some tea slot connectors, tea slot nuts, I should say does look like it. Let's take a closer look. So inside the main packaging we have one bag with a whole bunch of these and they're labeled, I don't know if you can read that, uh, 20M4. don't know if there's as little as 20 in here. It said 50 pieces on the bag, on the, the, the big package. And these guys, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's ten, and there's five bags of those. And if you can read this, that says four millimeter as well. So some of these should be M5, and some should be M4. See, it says 20 M4 as well. So I think there's 50 in this one. And they look about M4, and I think there's 50 of these. They look about M5, as in 5 millimeter diameter bolt that goes inside here. But there's really only one way to find out, and it's to open it up. So here we go. Take one of these. If you've never seen these nuts, they're actually quite interesting. They're supposed to fit inside these aluminum extrusions. So let's see if they fit in there. So it slides in there, but will it go in oh, this way? Will it go in directly sideways? Yeah, okay, it fits. Okay, so this is one which looks like it has an M5 hole to me. Here is an M5 Allen cap nut, or cap screw. And I think it's roughly, yeah. So it's roughly, well, you can't see that. It's roughly five mil in diameter. It's supposed to be M5. So let's see if it threads into here. Oh, it seems to thread perfectly. So these guys are probably, or definitely, M5. Now on the other end, we've got these, these little guys here. They should be the same outside dimensions, but the threading, the hole in the threading should be for M4. And see they're a little bit, the hole's a little bit smaller compared to the size of this guy. Put them down side by side. Yeah, you can see there that hole is a bit bigger than that hole. And we'll see if this fits an M4 screw. So here is the screw in there. It's uh, pretty much M4. And yep, yeah, it's a perfect fit. So this is the hardware I had bought for my uh, DIY 3D printer. It actually took a very long time for it to come in. And this should also fit into here. There we go. It does. So there we go. So I can either improve my current 3D printer with these parts or I can build my own. So I can't actually find the listing for this uh, for some reason. I think I used a coupon code that I had already used on my account once before on eBay. Uh, so I think I did a guest checkout for these and I can't really find how much they had cost me but if I look for them now they're about $3 Canadian for, for 50 pieces of each. So this was probably about um, 6 bucks Canadian or so for all 100 T-slot nuts. So pretty good value overall. So this next one here is actually a result of me um, just bidding a whole lot of stuff for really, really cheap. Like I would go look at auctions on eBay that are about to end 
and if they don't have any bids on them, then I would bid a few cents. And uh, so this is one of those things. It says bike parts, so I'm pretty sure I know which one it is. But I think I got this for a few cents. Well, I'll check after. But there it is, a bike part. Let's take a closer look at this. And so this is supposedly a waterproof light that you hang off the back of your bicycle seat with these two hangers. You know how the bicycle seat has two metal rods for support? So you hang that off there. It's supposed to be waterproof and what you do is you click this button here where this is soft. All this rubber is soft. This rubber in the front seems a little harder. I can see an LED there and you just click this. There we go. LED is flashing rapidly. Click it again slowly and one last time on solid and this is blue colored. Um, so yeah, this was one of those auctions. I bid uh, 40 cents for this and I got it. So I don't think I'll do its own, I don't want to give this thing its own video, but I thought it would be pretty neat to play with. So that's all it is. It looks like it's a straw hat LED, blue one, soldered directly to the board here. I don't see any components on this side, except there is a blob. So there could be some sort of tiny micro in there and a coin cell holder and a coin cell. Yeah, it looks like I can push the coin cell out. That, so it is a CR2032 lithium coin cell. And I don't really see anything else in there. Maybe there is a switch underneath. It's hard to tell, but yeah, very simple circuit. Yeah, it does look like a little switch in there. Very simple circuit, very minimalistic and it seems to work just fine. Let's see if I can, there we go. A little clicky switch in there. And there we go. So 40 cents Canadian. If our, uh, if our dollar stores had this for sale, I guarantee they would charge something like four bucks for this little thing. I wish it was red, because then it would actually be useful hanging on the back of a bike, or white so it can hang it on the front of a bike, but hey, maybe you could just replace the LED. So yeah, pretty neat. So this one, I'm not sure what it is, but it says cell phone accessories and inside it's like, I don't know, squishy stuff. Not sure what kind of cell phone accessories I would have bought. Well, actually I do know, but it doesn't, shouldn't feel like that. Okay. This, these aren't cell phone accessories at all. Let's take a closer look. This is another one of those orders where I just can't find the original order. But uh, I had a look on eBay and five meters of this stuff is about three bucks or so. It's very cheap. This is um, aquarium airline tubing. And so it's supposed to be four mil on the inside, five mil on the outside. Is that approximately right? Yeah in that range four and yeah close enough and it's just this uh it's like really good quality super stretchy kind of silicone tubing that you use to pipe air into your aquariums and i buy this you know kind of bulk and then when i decide to change my mind on what kind of filtration my aquariums will need then i just throw away the older stuff and put this stuff in um, because this is so cheap, you know, you can afford to do that. Um, it kind of gets hard over time. I'm not sure why, because if it was uh, like a high quality silicone rubber, it shouldn't. But this one also came with these one-way valves and how these one-way valves work is they have a direction on them. Usually, there we go, this side. I don't know if you can see that. It says this side out. So basically, if you pump air through this way, then it lets air through, but it won't let air through the other way. So this way, it won't let it through. And basically what happens is, because there's a lot of pressure in your tank, in your fish tank pushing down on the water, um, it's possible that when there is a power outage, 
um, when you stop pumping air deep into the into the tank, the pressure pushes back, and it'll climb up the tube. And if it climbs up the tube and over the edge, then gravity will actually siphon your your tank, your aquarium to be empty. I have uh, different kinds of one-way valves in these. There's uh, six in here. And I find they're a little leaky, so I'm trying something new here. So this is about three bucks for five meters, and I think a buck gets you about 10 of these, but I think I bought this as a kit together. So take that with a grain of salt. Another thing is this, uh, this tube is quite smelly. Something in the process makes them stink, but if you rinse them a little bit before you use them, the, the stank goes away. But yeah, nothing special to see here. So next up, we've got this little guy here, and this says removal tool. This could be something I bought on purpose. This could be something I bought for cheap as an auction. I don't know. We will see. Ah, okay. So this goes with the theme of the channel quite well. Let's take a closer look at that. What this is, is solder wick or desoldering braid. Oh, soldering accessory, look at that. This is from AliExpress. If you do any soldering or actually repairing of stuff or whatever, you should probably have some of this in stock and I didn't have any, so I had to buy it. But uh, basically, you use this to desolder components off of boards. So what it is, I don't know if you can see that properly, but it's like a braid of copper. And some of these are impregnated with flux, and some of them you put your own flux. Um, this one was really cheap. I don't think it has flux, but that's okay, because I have a trusty flux pen here. So what you do is you put flux on your solder joint, and you heat this up and put it on top of your solder joint, and it takes all the solder out of it. So really good for desoldering. I use a desoldering pump primarily, but this will work as well. So it's kind of whatever you choose. You get, uh, I think you get a meter or two, oh, 1.5 meters. It was only like 90 cents. So uh, my point was I'm gonna buy one of these, I'm gonna give it a shot. And then if I like it, I'm gonna order a whole bunch. If I don't like it, I'm gonna order a different brand. Simple as that, whatever the heck this brand is. But yeah, again, cool tool to have, but nothing special to see here. Next one up is this medium size package. And this says syringe connector, so I'm pretty sure I know exactly what this is. So let's take a look anyways. Yep, it is. So let me show you what this is all about. So I don't know if you guys remember, or if you have seen it, I guess some of you guys won't watch every one of my videos, but on a mailbag a little while ago, I got this. This is just basically um, solder paste. Is it cracking? Uh oh. I don't know if this is drying out. I may have to use this sooner rather than later. But anyways. So the problem with solder paste is it's difficult to kind of push it out. You can buy a bunch of tips. The tips they screw on. I have one here like this. But the tips are very fine and the solder is very thick, so it's kind of not flowy. So what this is here is this is a way to deliver the solder out the tip. So this should fit onto here somehow. I think it just clips, to be honest. I don't really know. This way? Hmm. I don't know. Looks like I'm supposed to clip this on and then spin it to lock it. Yeah, it looks like it goes on one way. If you look, see that one's full, that one's hollow. If I flip it, that one's hollow, that one's full. So let's see here. Oh, might be a bit stiff. Maybe I got the wrong one. Oh, there we go. So that's on. It has a little o-ring. I should be able to twist it. There we go. Okay, so now this syringe is attached to this hose. And now on this side here, 
you should be able to connect some sort of pump system or maybe even another syringe and try to push air into here which will push down on this plunger which will extrude a little bit of solder paste. So I don't really have any sort of any way to pump air through here so I don't think I'll be able to use it just yet but eventually I will figure something out where I can. In fact let me see something I've got a different syringe here this one's just a manual push-pull one. Let me see if I can hook the, hook this up to this hose. That looks like it's a nut. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that'll be possible. Might need to snip this off, but not before I figure out what I want to do with it. So, yeah. You know, perhaps it's possible to pump air through this side, which will push through here. And since I have a larger diameter nozzle or a larger diameter plunger here, I'll actually get a little bit of a mechanical advantage. And if I get a really big one, I might be able to put a lot of pressure into this little tube and push the stuff out these tiny little needles. I may even have a needle that'll fit at the end here. That's interesting. Oh well, I guess that'll be for another video though. It's a bit much for a mailbag. Let's move on to the next one. And this here is the last one for today. And I think the one I'm the most excited about because I don't know if you can read that, but it says 30W 110V F450, something like that. So 30 watt, 110 volt. What could that possibly be? Well, I know, and you're about to find out. Oh, okay. Maybe I scored it with my knife. That might not be a good thing. Bam, look at these things. Let's take a closer look at that. So what these are, there's actually two of them, are a pair of LEDs. There's a score mark. I'm just going to snap them off because I doubt I'm going to use them together. A pair of LEDs that don't need a driver chip. If you look here, I don't know if you can see that because the contrast might be too weird. But there says neutral, or N for neutral, and there says L for live. So this is an LED that you plug directly into the wall, or you solder wires and then plug those directly into the wall. So these are driverless LEDs, and Big Clive has looked at these, a few YouTubers have looked at these. These are one step more special than this because these, I don't know if you can tell if the color is correct here, but the phosphor on top is orange. So this is actually a, it's a grow LED, it's to grow plants. And the reason why I ordered these was because I have aquariums. Those aquariums now have live plants. And so I can use these to attempt to make some sort of grow light to have them grow quicker. These were extremely cheap. They're about uh, $2.50 each. I paid about 10 bucks Canadian for, the, for all four of them. And who knows? I mean, cannabis is getting legalized in uh, October, very shortly actually. So maybe I can review these for use for growing for either cannabis in our case or tomatoes or whatever or even just aquariums. I am planning on building a canopy for my second aquarium and if I do I would love to use all LEDs for lighting so this would be fantastic and the fact that there's four of them at 30 watts I mean I have like 120 watts of output if it works. I do have heat sinks these are on an aluminum substrate but Actually, I'm not sure if that's aluminum, but either way, it's metal, it is, but it's very thin. It weighs nothing, so I think it's going to need more heat sinking than it looks. I might even put a heat sink over these devices here, because I think the way Big Clive was explaining it was that this part here is the full bridge rectifier, and then these parts are chips that dynamically adjust their resistance as the sine wave 
climbs and, and goes negative and climbs and goes negative, etc. So these are supposed to get pretty hot because they are like literally load resistors and that's a bridge rectifier and the LEDs themselves, I mean at 30 watts of consumption for this package, it's, it's tiny, like it is like paper thin, nearly paper thin. So here I got the whole substrate is about 0.8 millimeters, so not even a millimeter thick. And the entire thing is roughly, so 40, 40 mil by 54 mil. So that's a lot of heat to dissipate in a small area. I've got a collection of heat sinks that I might use. I have just some aluminum stock that I might use to just stick them on. I have thermal compound, but more than that, I am excited to give this a shot. I was actually afraid that the heat sinking would be too much on these, that it would be really hard to solder. But I can see now that I don't think that'll be a problem. I think my 65 watt soldering iron will be able to get these pads nice and hot and get some wires attached to them. So I'm gonna do that shortly. I really wanna play with these, although some of you might know that AC electricity, like 110 volts from the wall, scares the crap out of me. I'm an automotive guy, so really I'm used to DC systems. I do work on high voltage DC systems like hybrid batteries, but um, you know, still scares me. DC is, uh, is simple in my mind and this is a bit more complex, but we'll see how it works. So if you want to see that, stick, stick around to the channel because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be making this death defying video pretty shortly. And this seemingly random assortment of stuff is today's mailbag. Thanks for watching.